In this video, we're going to see how to select the better model among two alternative regression models. And we're going to use data file model feeding. I have the data file here. In this data file, we want to, the objective here is to predict the points per game. Right, so this is a data file for a football game. And the objective, the main objective is to predict points per game based on some predictors. And here we have multiple candidates for uh, the independent variables that can actually be in uh, our regression model, right? So selecting the best set of independent variables, that is uh, a task that is called model feeding, picking the best subset. And for that, there are a lot of different ways that that can be done, but they all fall within uh, either of these four uh, selection procedures, backward elimination, forward selection, stepwise selection, and best subset. In summary, the backward elimination, in the backward elimination, you start with all the candidates, a model that incorporates all the uh, candidate as the independent variables, and then at each iteration, you drop the weakest predictor, right? So you, you select the one that is le least significant, the relationship with the dependent variable, and you drop that and you keep going until you get to a model that all the in independent variables in the model are significant. They have a significant relationship with the dependent variable. So the backward elimination, you start with all and then drop at each iteration. Forward selection, you start with the best one. So you, you can check the correlation of each one of the independent variables with the dependent variable, and then pick the one that has the highest correlation and run the regression. At each iteration, you add the, another one, another variable that shows the uh, highest actually highest improvement in the R squared, for example. And as long as your additions are significant and keep significant, they, they, they have significant relationship with the dependent variable, you keep going, you keep adding the new variables until you get to a point that you cannot add a variable that improves your R squared significantly and the added variable remains significant. So once you get to that point, you stop. Stepwise selection, you start like forward selection, but in stepwise selection, you have the option to either add a new variable or drop one of these existing variable in your model. So it's basically a combination of forward and backward. So you start like a forward selection, but then at each iteration, you first check to see if you can if you can add something, and then if you can drop something from your regression model. And then the best subset, it, uh, it actually considers all the possible subsets and then compare those together, like compares everything based on the R squared and based on the uh, simplicity of the model and pick the model that is the best among all the possible. So in, in backward elimination, you don't need to check every single uh, possible uh, subset of all the candidates. You just, the procedure is actually straightforward. You start with all and you just drop one by one. Whereas in the best subset, you need to check every single possible subset of the candidates, all right? So best subset, course takes longer time. Um, so that's just a summary and I encourage you guys to go ahead and read the slides for 
the definition of these ones, you're not supposed to do them. You're not supposed to actually do them in Excel, but you need to understand the, the, the difference between them, the similarity between them, and uh, basically know how they work, right? So I'm gonna use data file model feeding. Here, my focus is that if we have two model, how do we pick uh, a better model? How do we pick the better model? How, among multiple models, like imagine if we wanted to do the best subset and we have a subset of a, actually a group of regression models. How do we pick the best model? How, what are the criteria for selecting the best regression model? So I'm gonna go ahead Go back to the data file. So the points points per game is what we want to predict. So this is our dependent variable. I'm gonna I'm gonna create two models, and we're gonna come we're gonna compare these two models just for the sake of um, uh, comparison and for the sake of uh, just getting to know uh, the comparison process. All right. So um, I'm gonna take yards per game. So I'm gonna change the highlight maybe to blue. Opponent's yard per game, penalties, interception and fumble. Interceptions and fumble, so five potential among all these. I'm just gonna uh, select these five and um, run a regression with this five, and then I'm gonna drop one or two factors among these five and uh, to have a second model, and then we're gonna make a comparison between these two models, all right? But first, I'm gonna have to make sure that I have my independent factors next to each other. So I'm gonna uh, physically move them and bring them next to each other. So column F, control X, cut it from here, paste it uh, on column D. So F, the current F is gonna be the new D. So insert, cut cells, I, control X, E, right click, insert cut cells. So it's gonna shift everything to the right side and bring um, the cut column to what we where we want basically. So and fumble control X cut and put it in here insert cut. So now I have a clean rectangle of uh, independent variable. All right. So I'm gonna run regression data analysis regression. So the Y range is gonna be points per game. X range is gonna be yards per game, opponent yard per game, penalties, interceptions, and fumbles, all the way to the end of this table. I have labels and I'm gonna put it in maybe P1 as my first model. And I'm gonna run another model uh, as my second model, but um, that's it. I'm, I'm not gonna uh, check for residual plots. Um, I don't really, I'm, I'm not worried about the residuals at the moment. I, I assume everything is fine with the residual. Um, all right, so this is my first model. So if I wanna write down the equation, so I just need the coefficients. Coefficients is gonna be uh, points per game, points, points equal to minus 1.7, 73 plus 
zero point zero eight three yards plus I'm sure you guys know how to write the equation so I'm just gonna put dot 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 here and so it's gonna be plus zero point zero 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 two times opponent yards and so on so that's that's the uh, that's the uh, equation estimated equation uh, for a model that includes all these five independent variables so now I'm gonna go ahead and drop opponent's yard and penalties I see that their their p-value is pretty large it's almost one it's, uh, it's much higher than five percent significantly higher than five percent so I'm gonna drop opponent yard per game and penalties from my regression and run a second regression model and we're gonna see if we get with I'm just gonna uh, come up with a, a second model and then we're gonna compare them so I'm just gonna mark these two opponents yard and penalties these are gonna be the ones that I'm gonna drop opponents yard and penalties so I just need to take them and put them outside of my rectangle so control X and I'm just gonna put them put them at the end maybe right here all right so I just what I did I physically removed these two because these two uh, I did not like the fact that their p-value was uh, very high so I just dropped these two out of my model I'm gonna run another regression with only the three factors I understand that the interception the p-value for interceptions um, is no not the intercept for fumbles is still uh, above five percent but I'm gonna keep that uh, it's 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 okay it's just we just want to compare these two models so if I run another regression data analysis regression so for X range I'm gonna change it instead of C D E F G I'm just gonna take column C D E and E Sorry. C D E all the way to the end of the table I have labels I'm just gonna put it in another place this time I'm gonna put it in uh, Z Z1 all right so now I have a second model and if I want to write down the coefficients I just if I want to write down the estimated equation points will be minus 1.7 plus 0 0.083 times yards plus again dot 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 so that's the new equation so I have now two regression models two two equations two estimated equations and now I want to compare these two this is still not perfect right I'm sure I can come up with a model that is probably better than both of these two models but I for now I just want to compare these two models for the sake of uh, demonstration purposes all right so when we want to compare uh, regression models there are usually two factors that we consider we have to consider so what are these two factors so I'm gonna call this one model one and this one model two so there are, like I said there are two criteria for um, comparing different regression models when we are um, estimating the same thing this is very important so in both cases we the dependent variable is the same we're using the same sample the same data set but 
the difference here, the only difference here is in the set of independent variables, the selection of the predictors. So that's the only difference. Now, I need to make comparison. The first criterion would be the strengths of the relationship, the strengths of uh, uh, regression models. And how do I measure the strengths of the uh, regression model? By their capability in terms of explaining the total variation in my dependent variable. And that's just the definition of R squared. So R squared is actually the measure for, uh, for um, the strengths of the relationship, all right? The strengths of a model in terms of explaining variation in variations in my dependent variable. So R squared is actually tell me about the strengths. And if you remember, I said when we have, when we're dealing with multiple regression, a, a stronger measure, a better measure than R squared would be adjusted R squared. So it's, it's, it's important to use adjusted R squared for comparing the strengths of different models. The second factor that also is very important when it comes to picking a better model is the simplicity of these models. And when we are talking about simplicity, I'm not just talking about the less number of, um, of independent variables. I'm talking about the number of significant variable in a regression model. So, so we have strengths and then we have simplicity, right? So these two factors together make a model practically attractive. So if you have a simpler model, but even if the R squared is a little bit less, but it's significantly simpler than another model, you probably are going to prefer the simpler model, right? If you have a complicated, a little complicated model, but R squared is significantly larger, you're probably gonna go with complicated model and you go with the one that is, it's R squared is significantly large, all right? So you need to pick, you need to really be uh, careful about the, um, what we wanna do, we wanna actually do a trade off between adjusted R squared and the significant, significant variables. The, the number of significant variables in the model. So here, so for model one, model one, I'm, I'm just gonna write down my observations for these two and, I'm, and then I'm gonna make a comparison. So for model one, I have an adjusted R square of 95%. And for the second model, uh, even though the R squared is less, ob obviously it should be less because I just dropped, these are exactly the same. I just dropped uh, two of the uh, independent variables. So R squared by definition is gonna drop for sure, 100%. But uh, I mean, as you can see here, adjusted R squared, when you run that um, uh, formula, when you uh, compute the formula for adjusted R squared, adjusted R squared actually increases for the second model. So that's great. So adjusted R squared for this one is, for the second model is 956, whereas for model one is 953. So we always prefer a larger adjusted R squared. So significant variable. Here out of one, two, three, four, five independent variables, how many of them are significant in 5% level of significance? How many of them, so among these five p-values, you just need to highlight the p-values that are 
um, actually, you know what? Uh, highlight the p-values that are less than 5%. So that's, that's really what we care about when it comes to uh, picking a model. So two out of five are significant. Two out of five, or let me just, two out of five here, two out of three. So this is less than 5%, this is less than 5%. And in total, I have three independent variables. So two out of three. So now when we want to make a comparison between these two models, model two is obviously um, more uh, preferred because uh, not only the adjusted R, it's adjusted R square is larger, but also it's, uh, it has um, uh, the same number of significant variables uh, as the other model, but among only three factors. So that, that'll make it a much simpler model compared to model one, right? So you, you're just dealing with three variables among the three, two of them are significant. So that's, that's actually a very good point that makes it much simpler than this one. And it's as strong as this one because you are still having two variables, two significant variables. One, uh, maybe rule of thumb here would be to multiply the adjusted R squared by uh, the significance variables out of the total number of variables, two by five. That just gives you an estimate, just to give you a unique measure for compares and whichever gives you, so that, that's how I basically combine. So I multiply this number with this number, two divided by three times. That's just a, that's really not a, uh, it's not really the best way to do it. It just gives you, uh, like I said, it's a rule of thumb. It just gives you a quick way to incorporate these two uh, measures. So whichever gives you, whichever is more preferred in both factors is probably the better model. Sometimes, I mean, we may have model two, it's adjusted R squared. Even if it's adjusted R squared was let's say right now is bigger so model two is obviously preferred because it's adjusted r squared is stronger it's larger and it has two significant variables out of three whereas the other one has only two out of five uh, candidate uh, independent variables, all right? Um, if, if this one, instead of 0.95, uh, if this one was 93, I would still go with this one because I'm just losing 2% in adjusted R squared, but my model is significantly simpler than the other model. But if this was 0.7, then even though I'm in the multiplication, this, like I said, this multiplication is not, is not necessarily uh, the best way. It's, it's, it's a very subjective issue here. But if you are losing 25% in your adjusted R squared, in your strengths of your, uh, in the power of your model, by removing two independent variables, then that is, I mean, you should probably reconsider your selection. I would, if this, if this was the case, I would probably go still with model one. But right now with these numbers that we have, 0.957, we definitely go with this. So it's really a subjective issue and it depends on um, how you basically uh, define the rule of selection. But usually, generally speaking, these are the main factors that are uh, 
considered in terms of that are considered in terms of selecting the best model. Adjusted R squared, the number or proportion of variables in the model that are significant. Their p-value is less than five percent. 